Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the torsional pendulum. There's a lot of similarity between the torsional pendulum and simple harmonic motion in linear motion. Here we have what we've seen before, a mass attached to a spring. The spring has spring constant k and the mass has mass m. As it oscillates back and forth between maximum distance in one direction where x equals the amplitude of the motion and in the other direction where x equals the negative amplitude of the motion, we can come up with the forces saying that the force applied to the spring or the spring applied a force to the mass is going to be equal to minus k times x. The larger x, the greater the force. Here's the equilibrium point when x equals zero. There's no net force. This, the spring does not have a force acting on the mass. We can write the differential equation because F can be written as mass times acceleration and acceleration can be written as a second derivative with respect to time of the position. If you write this as a differential equation and then we write it in this format, we then know that the solution to this differential equation is X equals the magnitude or the amplitude of the oscillation times the sine of omega t or it could also be written as the a times the cosine of omega t, where omega, the angle of frequency, can be found by taking the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass. We could then write the frequency of oscillation as such, which is 1 over 2 pi times omega. Omega, of course, is the angle of frequency, which then becomes the square root of k over m. And if we then take the inverse of that, the period, which is 1 over f, that is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Now we can have the exact same equations for a torsional pendulum. The, st the string here, or the rod, whatever this is suspended on, will twist as you bend this back and forth, or as you rotate it back and forth. If we apply a force parallel to the side of the disc here, applying a torque that will then twist this cable or twist this rod, and then we'll get it to go to its maximum displacement, the maximum twist angle we let go and then this disc will then start rotating back and forth and back and forth just like what we have here with the mass going back and forth like this. Notice that I is representative of the moment of inertia of a flat disc which is one half the mass times the radius squared. K is the torsional constant of this string or this rod or this wire. And here torque is defined as the product of F times R, the force applied to the side times R. Let me just go ahead and show you the force. So you're applying a force like this, parallel to the edge, that causes the disc to rotate. Now we're going to write the same equations, but now in terms of rotational motion like that. Instead of F, we write the torque. The torque applied to this disc will be equal to the negative. Instead of the K of the spring constant, we use the torsional constant, kappa, times, instead of the linear displacement, x, we use the angular displacement, theta. We then realize that when you apply a torque that causes the, what we call, angular acceleration, and instead of writing mass times acceleration, we can write this as moment of inertia times angular acceleration is equal to minus kappa times theta. And of course, this can be written as the second derivative of the angle of displacement. So this becomes I times the second derivative of theta with respect to time is equal to minus kappa times theta. And we can then rewrite this in this format. Let me go over here so I don't run out of room. That d squared dt squared of the angle theta is going to be equal to minus the torsional constant divided by the moment of inertia of the disk times theta. Just like we did over here, if we solve for this differential equation, and you don't need to know yet how to do that, unless you're advanced enough in your mathematics that you do know differential equations, you can then write it like this. This is the solution to that equation that the angle theta is equal to the maximum displacement of the rotation times either the sine or the cosine of omega t. Now in this case, omega is going to be equal to the square root of kappa, which is the torsional constant, divided by the moment of inertia, which is equivalent to the spring constant divided by the mass in this type of system. Now what we can say is therefore that the frequency, 
which is equal to 1 over 2 pi times omega, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the torsional constant divided by the moment of inertia. And that also means that the period, which is the inverse of that, is 2 pi times the square root of the moment of inertia divided by the torsional constant. So here are the two equations you might be very much interested in when you try to calculate the frequency or the period of oscillation or rotation of what we call a torsional pendulum. So here in this video, all we wanted to do is show you the equivalence between simple harmonic motion in a linear fashion with a mass and a spring, which can be calculated exactly the same for a torsional pendulum where the displacement will be an angular displacement instead of the forks force we have an applied torque and instead of using the spring constant we use the port torsional constant of the wire or the rod on which it's suspended. So that's how we can see how similar these two approaches are. That's how it's done.